Who would like to make some stereotypical jokes? Give it up for tracksuits! And crime! Only in like the Sopranos way. Um, what else? What else do you know about Jersey? It's, I don't know, it's the Garden State? Is it the Garden State? A lot of gardens. So does that mean there's a lot of gardens here? The Garden State is actually a trick to get you into the state. Oh, they're like, oh, You go, so, it's full of gardens! It's great, it's gonna be beautiful. And then you get here and... It sucks. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. whoa. That's intense whoa. language. Whoa. Does Jer uh, how many people think New Jersey sucks? <laughs> Clear minority. How many think New Jersey rocks? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, so. I believe the majority. One girl. Philly! <laughs> Some Very. real Philly love here. Jesus. Really? I thought that was, I thought that was a little tepid. I don't know. What's better? Philly? Or Newark. <laughs> no? Trenton or New York City? Okay. I don't Trenton. Know. I don't know that this is leading anywhere productive. I'm learning a lot. Um, well, if you guys have any fun facts, please, please don't hesitate to let me know. When I first, when I first visited New York, mm -hmm. I, I went uh, from the Trenton station to. Uh, trade Center, and um, they said that you couldn't go into the bathrooms alone in the Trenton Station. This was in the too 90s. many sexy men, or what? Not, not sexy men. Oh, but men who wanted to hurt you. Oh, take your stuff. Oh, okay. Is this true to this day? Mm. Trenton. God damn. Okay. I was I was going for like the gay hookup zone, but like <laughs> instead of I will walk in just being like, so it's up, and I'm just getting beat up. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Cool, great. <laughs> this isn't the cruising America I dreamt of. Only a couple people know what that is. The cruising America? Yeah. Go yeah. oh, tell, do tell. It's I mean, where I you get it. an RV and you drive across the country. Yeah. And? You meet some adorable people along the way. Hello! <laughs> Hi, my name is Abby. My question is for Alex. If you could pick someone else to be your father, who would it be in your life? But why would I do that when I have so many great fathers here with me already? That includes, that includes no, me. No, that, yeah, it's including right. you, of course. Right. Um, but that being said, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> yeah, then, I mean, you guys are cool, but then, are you Nick Cage? That's true, we're not, but Nicolas Cage say in what film? <sighs> Leaving Las Vegas. <laughs> You're dark. <laughs> yeah. You are dark. Okay, gone in 60 seconds. How about it? Gone 60 seconds? Hey, he's got cool leather jackets, he's got fast cars, he's very Winchester-y there. What about, what about National Treasure? He's got the sort of Indiana Jones thing going, right? He's an intellectual. Con Air. Con Air? Oh, love Con Air. What about Pig? What about what? Pig. Pig, haven't seen Pig. You haven't seen Pig? I haven't seen Pig. Have you guys seen Pig? Yeah! Pretty good, right? Yeah. Yeah, you guys so seen So Nick Cage, yeah. All right, Nick Cage. Whatever. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey. Oh no, what's your sign say? Well, first of all, I'll show you the sign. You scared me in Vegas. You scared me in Indy. What, what would you or, do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> this is really starting to haunt me. Um, this, is, this is the convention number three, where we have been in a battle of what would you do for a Klondike bar? You and, um, you and who? Just you and her. Amanda. Amanda? Me and Amanda have been locked. You guys are probably wondering, why? What would you do for a Klondike bar? Um, this has been a, a battle for us, and uh, I still don't have the answer. So I'd like to turn it over to Mark Pellegrino. Wait, wait, what, Amanda, what would you do for a Klondike bar? She won't do anything, is the answer. What? You'd do nothing for a Klondike bar? I don't really like them. Then why even ask the question? Stop, who started it? You started it's this? It's my fault. And you don't even have an answer either? Well, my answer is also nothing. I would pay the $3 or whatever. <laughs> no? You guys are so boring. 
That's what people usually say at my panels. They go, hey, Alex, you seem like a boring guy. You know? They do not. Well, that is true. I have to, it's true. But I, I wasn't going to say it out loud. No, it's kind of you. No. Um, so we could end with you. Do you have, a, do you have an actual question? Uh, yeah, I actually did. So am I going to get an answer or am I going to get a clotting bar now? We'll see. Oh, okay. okay, all right. My actual question is, if you could be involved with any of the following shows, uh, 911, Walking Dead, or This Is Us, which would it be and why? Is this for both of us? You answered yesterday. Are, uh, what? No, 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 You see, this is why we get in fights. You're those sassy, sassy answers. Uh, Mark, do you want to go first? I would say This Is Us. I'm a huge fan of This Is Us. I, think, I have not seen an episode yet where I didn't laugh and cry, and then laugh and cry simultaneously, like hysterically. I mean, it's just such a... It's such a great show. Such a great it seems show. very intense emotionally. It is. Yeah. It is, but very real, very I, I think relatable. I think there's everybody can relate to the, the problems that they all have and the issues that they're all going through. It's great. Mm. Then there's a part of me that I wouldn't mind. I, I, the Walking Dead sort of bores me. What? You guys like the Walking Dead? <laughs> bores me. You know, it's like when the characters sit down and start having these long monologues about what they're doing or what's, I just check the fuck out. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Kill zombies, for fuck's sake. What are you doing talking about your life? Who cares? Kill something. Is that how they do it on This Is Us? No, but I don't expect that. Okay. When I'm watching a zombie show, I want to see people getting from point A to point Z and having issues. Point Z? That's good. Point A to point Z. No, that's good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, very good. So, um, but I want to see that. I don't want to see, you know. You, you want to see the carnage. I want to see the carnage, and, 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 I, and I don't want people talking about themselves. Just stabbing. No, but I, I want to see it. I want to see, the, I want to see, I want to see, act, I want to see it in action, right? If I, want to, if I want to watch people talking about themselves, I'll go see a play. But right, I'm, I'm watching a cinematic medium. I want to see the action. I don't want to hear people talking. I would probably like to be on Walking Dead, just for the murder. No, no, and not no, for the talking. Because it's the biggest show on television. It's even bigger than This Is Us, right? Uh, it depends on who you ask. No, I mean, but there are there've got to be hard numbers that show us one way or the other. Specifically, yes, The Walking Dead has pulled in more money because it has several spinoffs. It has the yeah. comics, so it has been bigger. I like the comics. Do you work here? Do you work for The Walking Dead? What's going on? I mean, I'd love to work. You're, actually, our uh, numbers are very strong right now. Uh, Wait, isn't it over? Isn't The Walking Dead over? No, it ends this year. Ten, is that ten seasons? I'm not gonna lie, I think I tuned out after after they killed Carl. Because I really just love tuning in just to see the Carl. That was the best part for me. Carl. No, spoiler. Wait, did you read the comics? Grow up. We have the internet. <laughs> Hi. If something's been on for ten years, it's not a spoiler. That'd be like Spoiling the end of Seinfeld. I tuned like, the shit's over. I tuned out after Rick Grimes died. Yeah. And then after the governor died. And then Daryl died. And then when Daryl croaked, that was the big one. I was really, he was so sexy. I didn't want him to die. With the, let, me, let, me ask, die. let me ask a serious question. This, uh -oh. is, this is a survival question. Uh -oh. How does Daryl kill so many zombies with all that hair in his face yeah. and with only one part of an eye showing? He's, that's his good eye. That's, that's his why. good eye. Yeah, he like peers out of that one. <laughs> hey, thank you. Oh my. Wow. Good. Service with a smile. Thank you. When did life get so good? What's your drink? Go ahead, tell me. Do I have to? Yeah. <laughs> it's a vanilla latte? How many people think my drink is worse? What is it? I have a decaffeinated soy mocha with whip. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I didn't come here to fight, you know? Uh, hello. Um, I have, this is a question that I'm asking everybody. What video on YouTube gives you the most happiness and have you ever been kicked out of a game for being too good? Like, like Monopoly or like a video game or what? Um, any game, 
maybe just like board games. Okay. I don't know, like Trivial Pursuit or something. Do you have a YouTube video that you love? <laughs> I mean, um... <laughs> yeah, I'm concerned. No, I'm afraid to say <laughs> what I look at at YouTube. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about your search history. <laughs> so well, when you go into private way. mode, what do you... <laughs> <laughs> Tell the world what you, what you, what you, what you watch on private mode. Okay, no, I mean, it's not treat. that. I mean, you... <laughs> Did you try to take a drink from your microphone? I was like, ah. Chip off the old block. Yeah. When you think actors are smart, you're wrong. So, I mean... <laughs> let me ask the second... Let me answer the second one first. Okay, okay. I'm making a big deal out of this thing. You're going to be totally disappointed by my YouTube things. But, but um, board games, I, I unfortunately mostly play with my wife who's like Mensa and solves puzzles. Like she, she, can, she can go on, say, Words with Friends on a language she doesn't speak and beat native speakers in the language because she just knows how to combine letters. And if she knows how the letters start and end in that language, she can pretty much beat everybody. And by the way, she plays Serge on Words with Friends in French. Oh, in Serge, French. Serge was the DP uh, of Supernatural. She plays him every day. And he's won maybe twice in the last five years. I think, I think you might have to call that like words with enemies at that point. Well, I mean, and she doesn't just beat people; she beats them by hundreds of points. It's humiliating. So that does I've never, humiliating. I've never won a board game with her either. I'm like, you just have good game. You have some kind of luck. That's it's it's freakish. I've never won a game, so I can't say. Damn. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I always lose Monopoly, or at least I, I lose morally, you know? Eventually I just get so frustrated where I'm like, I gotta like mortgage the house. You know, it's a little too like real life for me. Uh, so I don't, I really hate that game. Monopoly never ends well. No. We played that in the 70s and it, I mean, we were already a toxic family where I came from. And just putting That's that good. game just made it worse. Yeah. Uh, random YouTube video. You know, I, I used to be very simple, and uh, you know, I just love seeing people get hit in the balls. You know, but but <laughs> That's now where it was going but with. now that I've grown older, I realized that you know, you, you get a little older, you get a little more mature, and um, the thing you love more than that at, at this point is still people getting hit in the balls. In the end. In the end, it's all but, about. But I also I also like watching street fights. <laughs> so. Yo, yeah, what? Street fights. <laughs> <laughs> and bar brawls and stuff like that. They're just random. Because I like to see how people fight in real life because it's never good. Um, or sometimes you see the guy that's, you know, thinks he's a street fighter go up against somebody who knows his shit. And that's uh, interesting as well. So I watch that. I watch bare knuckle like fights. Um, wow. UFC, I, I, I watch, you know, jujitsu YouTube stuff, um, you know, stuff like that. Oh, totally violent. Street fights with Mark. My God. I could host, I could host a show, Street Fights with Mark. No, I'm actually more likely, like, I'm gonna, like, find a video of you, like, fighting a guy in the street. There might be one. There actually might. Well, I think, I think the last, footage. no, the last street fight I got into, I don't know if they had, did they have cell phones in, what was it, 90? Nope. For. Well, they, they, didn't. they didn't have video, that's yeah, they didn't for sure. Have video, right. no. There were a lot of witnesses to it, but they're... they're I, I was about to go into kindergarten then, so that's, ex that's exciting. Really? Yeah. Wow. I was just like, oh, I gotta learn my ABCs, and Mark is like, I'm gonna teach this guy the ABCs. <laughs> of violence, yeah. Wow, that was... Okay. So wow. that's where I go to. Oh, cats are great, though. I love cat videos. They're I hysterical. like street fight oh, videos only. of cats. <laughs> you can't combine that. You know, you get the crazy cat that like grabs the guy by the nuts and just... Yeah. I want the, uh, Mark Pellegrino presents <laughs> Cat Fights. <laughs> Hello. Hi. This is a question for Alex. Um, you've been on two of my favorite shows, Supernatural, obviously, and Arrow. And I just wanted to know... Well, you're you in the right place. <laughs> I just wanted to say if you, you could see any parallels between Jack and Lonnie Machen. Um, not not a lot of parallels. Um, one was a was an innocent nephilim, and the other one was a violent socio psychopath who lit people on fire. So um, 
You know what? I, I guess I did have the power of to kill people. Um, that would be the parallel. Do you have a parallel that you saw? I was just thinking that both products are their environment. Way to give a smart answer and make me look dumb again. <laughs> Don't worry, watch me drink my microphone real quick and things will be good. Uh, that is, that's, a, that's a very lovely answer. Um, I would say also that they have my face. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, my question is mostly for Alex, but obviously you are welcome to answer too, Mark. Alex, since you okay. and I are both 90 babies, I was just wondering what do you miss most about the 90s? What do I miss most about the 90s? Um, like, like something that doesn't exist anymore. Um, the power of friendship. Um, <laughs> the fact they, that I didn't get they, to see Nirvana. Uh, listen, Mark. Mark lived the 90s. So, uh, what, so what did you? What did you miss? You're saying you were too young. Yeah, I mean, it's not like I got to like, you know, again, like go to a, a great concert or something, or like live through the last era before social media, uh, you actually got to live it. So is there something you miss most particular yeah, about mean, the 90s? I mean, you know, uh, the busy signal on the phone. <laughs> Paging my drug dealer. And answer, uh, answering machines. Um, you know, the fact that you had to actually mostly talk to people in person instead well, of Well, I don't know what text. that's like. Yeah. Yeah, weird. I mean, that was, you know, that encouraged, I think, connections that we don't really have anymore. Here's a question. So when my phone rings, I assume that A, someone has died, or B, I'm in trouble. But back then, I feel like it must have been exciting. Like, no caller ID, you're just like, holy shit, this could Who be is my it? mom. This could be someone I want to date. That could be thrilling. I never quite looked at it that way. No, but you know, check this out. There used to be a service called Time, right? You could call, you could call up and get the time. At the tone, the time will be. Shut up, really? No, no, yeah. From wherever you were, you could get this time. But in California, I don't know if this happened in other states, in the pause between, at the tone, the time will be, there was a party line and people could sh were sh shouting out their numbers in the pause. That's how my stepbrother met his wife. No way. <laughs> what? We, we were 16 and they started dating when they were 16 and then they became man and wife. But they You're met kidding. Each, no, they met that each other. That is the most way. 90s thing I've ever heard in my so life. So I miss, that was actually more 80s, but I miss, I miss time that you could call. Can you still call it today and get the time? Yeah, we don't need Y'all heard of watches? <laughs> really? Are you okay? I do love that though, like what time is it? And you're like, man, that, that person sounds real good looking uh, on the other end of this time call. No, they would just go, Set four, five, 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 they'd just be shouting their number out and if you caught it, you'd call them up and then people would hook up. And this hookup just turned out to be like a lifelong deal. Tinder, Tinder the night. A serial killer's dream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it probably was. Yeah, yeah. Just like was. hitchhiking was a serial killer's dream too, but it was yeah. like the fad in the '60s. That would probably be the one thing I would miss in the '60s. I actually hitchhiked a few times. Yeah, but less think, people wait. want to kill you, you know. I think well, you, you know, because you're like you're like you like street fights. And they're like, <laughs> you're like, don't fuck with this guy. Well, they didn't know that at the time. How many people here have hitchhiked? How many people have gotten in the car with a really weird wrong person? Yeah. Okay. I What's have wrong two. With you guys? I have two. But you don't know, one of the, the best hitchhiking story, not, not best hitchhiking story I have, but one of the most interesting was, I was hitchhiking, and an old hippie on a tandem bike was driving it alone, and he stops, he's like, hey man, it's like, you gotta work for it, but you wanna ride? And I got on! <laughs> I love that guy! But then the bike broke down! <laughs> The brother's chain came off the spokes and broke, and then he's like, oh, I'm sorry, dude. Okay, by the way, there's gotta be nothing sketchier than a man alone on a tandem bike. bike. <laughs> hey, I was, I was 18 years old. I didn't, I didn't have it in me to ask, I just, to ask why. I just went. Not like, hey, what happened to the last yeah, guy? What? <laughs> or what happened to your wife? <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't, he didn't look like the type that had. Yeah, he didn't, he's not uh, a white guy. No, yeah. Not, yeah, very. So, you know, I don't want to say antisocial because he was social enough. But to he was destined to die alone, is what you're saying. I think so. I understand. Yeah, drug addled then alone. Hello. Wait. Hi, my name is hey. Stacy. Hey, Stacy. Today is my son Andrew's birthday. 
Woo! Um, happy birthday to you. Thank you. To Andrew? Um, yes, Andrew. What up, Andrew? <laughs> Thanks. Andrew. Okay, Mark, um, yes. questions for you. I loved you as, as your character, Lucifer, but I also really liked you as Jacob and Loss. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, my question is, throughout your career, who has been one of your favorite co-stars? Quickly. Um, <laughs> No, um, seriously, that's such a biased question. No, but this doesn't. Uh, this, this isn't just because he's here. He, uh, you are one of my favorite people. All right, I'm, you're, you're, you're acting like this is. Yeah, don't say bullshit. Don't be bullshitting. I'm not. I'm actually saying that because you're your own man, and I really like that. That's a quality that I really like about somebody: independence, and independent thinking. And he's got that. And, and I would say like. Um, uh, Sam Witwer is one of the people that I really bonded with on Being Human, and we're still friends to this day. And I bet you like Sam. Yeah, he's he's awesome. He's he's great in his um, animated stuff that he does, Star Wars stuff. Darth Maul, right? He plays Darth Maul. Just Darth Maul? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, and he's and he's he's just a cool, a cool dude. We nerd out together, and um, I dig him. So I would say he's been one of my favorites to to work opposite. Thank you. Uh, that's extremely flattering because Mark has worked with like Philip Seymour Hoffman. So, you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman, me, you know, it's, it's very kind of you. Well, I was thinking more in terms of, you know, personal, personal like, uh, you know, a guy like Philip Seymour Hoffman was, was really accessible and really cool and really generous to me. But, you know, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't feel like I knew him. And that's when he passed, it was such a shock to me because, um, I knew him on a uh, on a different on a different level, so you know, great guy to work with. But well, thank you. You're also, you better get that. Also, I'm pretty sure this kid's like four, so I don't know why he has a cell phone. He's like got to text his kids See, from like preschool and shit. That's something I miss from the '90s. Is is you know when kids played outside. They're not allowed outside anymore. Right? But I don't think the number of serial killers and, and, and malignant characters... Hi, buddy. Hi. I remember you. I remember you. I, he, he wanted to play the game and he yeah. held it out to me and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. I remember. You were dressed as Crowley. Yeah. All right. Oh. I want to see you dressed as Lucifer at my table today. <laughs> I'm kidding. kidding, buddy. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. I don't think the number of like malignant characters has gone up out there, but our paranoia about them has. And, sure. I th and I think it's damaging the kids can't go outside and play anymore. I used to, yeah. I used to play in the trees and ride my bike. Huh? Good, they gotta play outside. They I mean, need to get filthy. It's important for their brain development. They need to get dirty too, so their immune systems build up. They just need, right? We need to, we need to get anti-fragile. Well, that's how I'm raising my kids. What? You're just, uh, Hello. Lucifer didn't exactly have the best relationship. Um, you could say that. <laughs> if they had had a better relationship as father and son, what shenanigans do you think they would have gotten up to together? Oh man. Uh, see, I was really hoping Jack would go evil, right? And I feel like we could have really broke down in the really? evil sphere. Yeah. You wanted to go evil? Oh yeah. But yeah, I yeah. wanted to go good. Well, listen, we've all got our <laughs> desires. None of which came true. It happens. Um, I think Lucifer sort of spelled it out when I when I was giving you my vision of the universe, right? It was something like, oh, we can make, what did I say? Like, pterodactyls and, I don't know, we could just go crazy and create crazy weird things. Yeah, I feel like it would be a blast. Making pterodactyls, playing with lightsabers, hanging out with real Darth Maul. Right? We could create Darth Maul and hang out. Come on. Have a beer with Darth Maul. And there's drinking involved? Come on. Super illegal to give a three-year-old beer, but we're not going to talk about Anything that. Anything goes. Anything goes in our universe. Right. And at three years old, you were a full-grown person, right? Yeah, I did. Full-grown. You were a full-grown person when you were right zero. out of the womb. Sorry, yeah. mom. Listen, I didn't make me. Calm down. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I have this kind of similar question, asking you guys about your characters and what you think their motives would be. So, kind of for both of you, but first, Mark, if Lucifer was able to return at this point and learn that, you know, his own son had been able to successfully remove Chuck from power, do you think Lucy would be proud of Jack? 
Do you think he'd like try to pursue that relationship again? I don't think he'd be proud of him. I think he'd be a little jealous, but hide it and try to get on Jack's good side yeah. and possibly harness that, sorry, possibly harness that power for something that he wants, which yeah. is, you know, universal domination. So he'd probably have to figure out a way to eventually get Jack out of the picture, <laughs> which I don't think he'd be able, I'm sorry. Okay. But I think that's okay. the way Lucifer would, would end. Hey, I, I can't, you know. Especially, no, but no, it's not. I think I think he was going against his nature, but you blew it, to be honest with you. Because you chose the Winchesters and Castiel over Lucifer. And I think whatever hope he had was, for, was dead then. Just, just was obliterated when you chose, you know, the uncles over. The, the sexy yeah. uncle gang. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say sexy uncle gang. Incompetent. I think they might disagree with you, but you know. Incompetent. Uh, a little bit, little bit wimpy. Very emotional too, you know. And emotional. A lot of ups and downs. Lots of ups and downs. Very inconsistent. Very yeah. constant. Yeah. Do they love me? Do they not love me? You you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Am now, I Winchester or not, Dean? So, 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 so now you know. You're seeing what I'm saying. Yeah. This you're is on my side now. You're, you're, now you're on my side. We'll see. <laughs> see. I just needed a little time. Okay, Alex, pretending you didn't hear that. <laughs> do you Hold on. <laughs> Hi, what's your question? <laughs> do you think Jack would be open to hearing from Lucifer now that he himself, Jack, is aware of what Chuck did and how it showed technically Lucifer had been right the whole time? Of course he would. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, having not heard anything before this, yes. uh, <laughs> No, I don't know. Uh, yes, he would. I, I think I think based off uh, Mark's superpowers and your clear love of Lucifer, that you know, for your question, I'd say Jack would sway. How about that? Well, you're just telling her that what she wants to hear. That's correct. <laughs> Hi. But I think what you want to hear is correct. I'm just saying. I was right. Everybody knows this. Right, but you know, it would be a, it would be it would be sweet to have him you know realize that himself. Maybe some cool outfits. I don't know. Hi. Hi, I'm Amanda. By the way, I have the same coffee order. And nice. Second, do you wish you as him? You have the same coffee order. order as him. One coffee for me, zero for you. Okay. <laughs> do you wish you join the show sooner, Alex? Well, it wasn't really up to me. Um, <laughs> Um, hey, could you have impregnated my mother earlier? Sure. There you go. Um, yeah, listen, it would have been great, but, uh, you know, I, I really feel like Jack's kind of purpose was to, like, help the show, you know, get to the finish line, so to speak. And I think my character was, uh, helpful for all, everybody else kind of fulfilling their destiny in a sense. So I think I'm very thankful for that and what Jack got to show you know, for the Winchesters and, and for Castiel. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Tepid applause. Yep, tepid response, tepid applause. Hi, so this question uh, really just applies to Alex, but obviously Jack by the end of the series was only like three years old. So like, I was wondering what kind of challenges you faced when acting because you know, your the mindset is not of a three-year-old, and neither. Wait, that's you. debatable. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get too ahead of yourself there. Um. And obviously, like Jack is not exactly the mind of a three-year-old, but like he's only gonna know so much. So like, just like, what kind of challenges were you facing, and like, you know, like something that was like, oh, maybe he shouldn't actually have known that. Well, I mean, for me, it was, it was kind of easy. The, the real challenge for me is pretending to be competent in real life. Um, whereas the show, they're like, hey, we need you to dumb it down a little. I was like, oh, don't worry. Uh, don't worry, I got this. Um, no, I definitely was trying to, I was trying to make things very simple for him. I wanted everything to be new for me every time. So... I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad Mark got that response. Um, yeah, I was trying to be simple and sweet. 
All right. No, it's not gonna. <laughs> you okay? No. Okay. It's not gonna be funny to anybody. <laughs> Oh no. Like she's no, but when she's like, since you're obviously not a three year old, I'm thinking all actors are three years old. Yeah, yeah. And that seems not as funny to you, but, but it is to me because I know it. Yeah. I wanted him to be Don't naive and sweet. And, you uh -huh. know. Yeah, uh -huh. Serious answer. I think you had that down. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Hello. Thank you. Thank you. Next time, ask a Lucifer question. Yeah. Hi, my name's Kara. Um, who is an actor that you dream of working with that you haven't worked with before? <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? What? what was your question? What? It's hard to hear because of that. Because I have ADD. <laughs> Who is an actor that you haven't worked with before that you would want to work with? <laughs> are you Are you asking both of us? Yeah, both. Okay, go ahead. Alex, you go first. Um, I'm a huge fan of Mad Men, so anybody in that cast, but specifically for me, John Hamm, I thought would be really cool to work with. Uh, I've worked with him. I know. He's on awesome. a film called Beirut. He's awesome. Yeah. 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 What about, I mean, Elizabeth Moss, too? I mean, she's amazing. She yeah. the, Put she, me on the Handmaid's Tale, but like, as one of the good guys, you know? I don't want to be doing the weird shit, you know? But I think she was, I think she was the, the weird shit. I, I, it's not cool, man. It's not cool. I think she was the hero of, of Mad Men. I think she was the most interesting character. Peggy was incredible. She yeah. was, Peggy was awesome. Um, yeah, that's a great choice. God, there's so many good actors out there. Who do want to? I just saw Sam Rockwell. That would be amazing. Oh my god, I'd love to work with Have Sam Have you guys Rockwell. seen Galaxy Quest? Yeah. yeah. I was so watching on the good. plane. So good in that. Is I want good? Galaxy Quest 2. Oh, really? Well, I mean, yeah. Why not? Uh, I don't, well... Well, you know what they say. If you do something well, do it continuously well until it fails. I think it might fail after, you know... Galaxy Quest 4. No. 3? I think 2, two. would fail. I don't think 2 would be as good. Well, damn. Okay. So, so many great people in that. Um, yeah, Sam Rockwell is somebody I would love to work with. He's Meisner too, which is where, which is my background, um, and uh, I'd love to work with somebody who comes from that same same place. Woody Harrelson too. I'd sort of love to work with him. I saw him live on stage do us do an Edward Albee play called Zoo Story. Does anybody know the Zoo Story? No. Okay, a couple people. Out I've there. heard of the movie starring Matt Damon called We Bought a Zoo. No, different, <laughs> very different. But Woody Harrelson. Not the same. No, not okay. the same. Not the same. Woody Harrelson, Woody Harrelson played one of the parts. He was very good in it. Um, little theater in Los Angeles. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Uh, Emma Stone, I love Emma Stone's work. Andrew Garfield, oh my God, I love that guy. I'd love to work with him. Did you see Tick, Tick, Boom? Was he? he was brilliant. Oh, I love him. So, um, yeah, there's just, there's tons. And the old school guys, too. Who wouldn't want to work with Joe Pesci or the, De Niro or, or Pacino, for Christ's sake. Ooh -ah. Ooh -ah. Yeah. I'm trying to guess the average age here, and with the lack of ooh -ah reference, I'm guessing like 16, 17? <laughs> what up, Gen X? Gen Z? Gen Z. So how many, people, Zombie. how many people here have seen Scent of a Woman? <laughs> that should be a reference, though. Yeah? Oh. Hello. Hello. Um, hello. I have to say, first to start off with, I love both of you, and Mo, you um, acting in Being Human was underrated, and people should watch that show. Oh, thank you. And, um, I'm gonna change up my question a bit. If you had to pick your favorite Star Wars character from Obi Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker, or Darth Maul, who would you pick? Me? Or both of us? Oh, I'm an Obi Wan guy. Well, actually, but those are the only choices I have. Well, can I have Yoda? No love for Jar Jar. No, no, I want, I want Yoda. Fine, you get two Jedi and two Sith. So Anakin, Obi Wan, Darth Maul, 
Obi Wan. Or um, Star Killer from the Four Star 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 games. Star I'm, I'm, I'm totally right. All I heard was blah 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 because I'm totally out of the loop in Star Wars, but I, I would go for Obi Wan from from what I do know. I would go with probably Anakin. He seems very tormented, you know. Got a lot of feelings. Uh, yeah, I feel like that'd be a really fun part to play. Except for he has some of maybe the corniest lines ever. It's like, it's like, oh, the feeling of sand. Remember this? The feeling of sand? Like he's like he's like I don't like sand. It's hard and it's coarse. And you're like you're like who wrote this? That's... But Anakin, I think Anakin would be a super fun part. And then you get to be. You know, you could be Vader after that, that'd be awesome. Super underrated. So is Jar Jar Binks, correct? I hear you guys. You love Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks. Hi. Hi. Uh, so the show Supernatural has a lot of urban legends. So growing up, did you have any urban legends that were like local to you and were you afraid of them? I feel like we were, well, I was going to say, were we afraid of more things in the 90s or less? Now you have the internet, and you have things like Slenderman, and you're like, wow, that's going to not help me sleep. Did you have any urban Plus, you know, since Blair Witch Project, horror movies started coming out where like, this is a true story, you know, and found footage. And you know, people really think for a while that what they're seeing is, is reality. So um, we didn't have anything like that when I was growing up. I, I don't, we didn't have any urban legends in Van Nuys. California. No? No. Uh, we, we didn't need any. <laughs> yeah, you're like, we were living in It was a things. horror show <laughs> from moment one. No, it didn't. Did you have like a crazy urban legend growing up? Like, don't go down that street because the so-and-so lives there or what? Um, yeah, my grandfather always told us one about the lake where we had a camp. Um, and there was a headless I feel guy. like I've seen this movie. <laughs> Wait, there was a what? There was a guy who went into like the, the little bog and lost his head, and now he searches the whole lake for his head. Your dad said this to grandfather. grandfather. Your grandfather. Your grandfather. He tells you that, and he's like, all right, good night, I love you. I just want like, to tell you, I just want to tell you something, sweetheart. Yeah. You know that lake you go to? There was you know a that guy lake you love to swim in? Yeah, that you swim in, especially at night? There's a guy who went there and lost his head. At night, he likes to look for it. Have fun. Like, thanks, Grandpa. Thanks, Gramps. Oh, well, he, well you were there, too. Yeah. Oh, Gramps I, thought, a, I, I love your grandfather. That's grandfather. exactly what I would do. A little bit of a shit disturber, eh? Yeah. You may think this is a really beautiful spot, but let me tell you what happened here 15 years ago. And the kids are like, who? All right, good. Have fun. Go, go, go. Why don't you want to swim? Weird, because I might get my head chopped off. Hi. Hi. Um, my question is, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> if your characters could interact with any other characters on the show, who would it be and why? I never, I never got to work with Mark Shepard. I feel like that would be Crowley and Jack would probably have some fun interactions. Yeah, why, how did that not happen? Well, I wasn't alive then. Because you didn't. Uh, make because me yet. he died. He died in the alternate universe. You weren't there yet. No, no you, I wasn't. You, I wasn't around. Wait. What, well, you were born, and it caused the rift, and that's what. I, it's really fun uh, when your father blames you for not being born yet. <laughs> it's kind of like, wait, wait, where were you? I'm like, that was on you, no? Yeah, I forgot that he. Well, he died at your around your birth, basically. So you. I don't know. I wasn't there. there. <laughs> well, you should have been, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that would have been. You're a nephilim. You can do anything. Apparently not be born. Uh, that would, I feel like, would have been really fun. Plus, I could, you know, hear the fun tenor. Fuck. You know? Would have been great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I would have loved to uh, interact with Mega, uh, Megatron. Mega, Megatron? Mega, Megatron. 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 Like, you um, I knew what it was, I swear. I thought that was a Transformer. Booker. <laughs> Megatron. <laughs> Right. Steal, steal our stage stuff. Yeah, uh, Meta, Mega, Mega, Meta, Metatron. Ah, oh, it's our stagehand. Yeah. 
Thank, Thank you, God. kind sir. This is Shepard's bit. He does this it. Is what happens he will not be announced. Actor. He will not be announced. No, he just comes out. Nobody ruins an entrance like Mark Shepard. Yeah. Uh, New Jersey. Thank you. Very Thank you, much. New Jersey. Thank you. Mark.